Bungay stands on a site which has many of the attributes of a natural fortress, with high ground sloping abruptly down to the marshy banks of the river Waveney. These attributes were recognised by the Saxons, who made Bungay a fortified town, constructing earthworks and ditches to complement the town's natural defences. By the Norman conquest, Bungay was a very important town, and after the conquest it remained in the hands of Sugard, the Saxon Archbishop of Canterbury. His timely surrender to the Normans had allowed him to retain his estates, of which Bungay was a part, at least until 1070. The first Bygod castle at Bungay was built by Hugh Bygod, Earl of Norfolk, begun in 1165 and built in the form of a great square Norman keep some 90 feet high with 18 feet thick walls it took seven years to construct. It was built on the Mound Castle thrown up by William de Noyers who was granted the township of Bungay by William the Conqueror in 1070 following the dispossession of Stigand. Having twice taken arms against the king, Hugh Bygod finally surrendered in 1174 and the castle was ordered to be destroyed. A mine gallery was driven into the southwest angle of the keep but work stopped on payment of a 1000 mark ransom. In 1176 Hugh was killed in Syria fighting for the king and the castle abandoned. In 1294 Roger Bygod, 5th Duke of Norfolk obtained a royal license to crenellate his house at Bungay and proceeded to build a new castle in a style similar to those being built by the king on the Welsh marches at Conway and Harlech. The original keep of Hugh Bygod was retained and refaced. Lofty curtain walls were built both around the original mound and outside the two towered gatehouse which can still be seen. A further gatehouse at the end of the outer bailey has long since disappeared. Work on the castle was hardly complete when Roger Bygod died in 1297, leaving his estate to the crown. Gifted by Edward II to his brother, Thomas de Brotherton, in 1312, the castle passed through many hands before becoming the property of the Howards, Dukes of Norfolk, in 1483. However, by 1382, at the death of William de Gifford, one of its many owners, it was recorded as being in a ruinous state. After the castle became ruinous in the late 14th century, stone was stripped from it for use as building materials and poor lean-to houses were thrown up against the outside walls. In 1766 it was sold to a local builder named Micklebur, who purchased it for the purpose of salvaging materials from the site. Using the ruins as a quarry, he did extensive damage to the walls and the undermined appearance of the keep bears witness to the attacks of his pickaxes. Finding the walls fairly unyielding, he sold the castle to Elizabeth Bonhot, wife of a Bungay attorney. Mrs Bonhot was a novelist and wished to live and write among the romantic ruins of the old castle. She had a small house built between the towers as a summer residence and here she wrote her novels, one entitled Bungay Castle. Elizabeth Bonhot sold the castle to Charles, Duke of Norfolk, who was keen to regain possession of this ancient fortress of his ancestors. In 1841 the cottages abutting the walls of the castle, the house of Miss Bonhot and other dwellings constructed in the keep, now habitations of the lowest class of people, were removed. The improvement was recorded by a local noted diarist, J.B. Scott. The towers now stand alone and look more majestic than there before. The trustees of the Duke of Norfolk again sold the property in 1884, but it was repurchased by the next Duke in 1898. Little interest was taken in the ruins until 1934, when Dr. L.B. Kane, Town Reeve, raised £500 by public appeal to fund excavation work. This was carried out under the direction of Hugh Braun, a noted architect and archaeologist. Soil and vegetation was removed from the keep and gatehouse and the turning bridge pit was discovered. The forebuilding of the keep and the mine gallery were revealed. 
buried since the reconstruction of the castle in 1294. Bungay Town Trust took a lease on the site and began a regular program of ground maintenance. Despite this pioneering work it was 30 years before further substantial work was attempted when £2,500 was spent on repairs. At this time Suffolk County Council purchased a derelict sale ground opposite the entrance and restored it as part of the Inner Bailey. In 1987 the Duke of Norfolk generously presented the castle to the town and provided an endowment for its upkeep. The castle passed into the ownership of Bungay Castle Trust. <laughs>